Dear friends, today we are discussing language across curriculum, definition, need and significance, principles and practices. Okay, see this less meaning and definition. Language across curriculum is a modern concept that a foreign or second language should be taught out of the traditional language classroom by using contextual and content based language teaching methodologies throughout the school hours. Hence, it demands that language learning should occur in language classrooms as well as subject classrooms. Need and significance of language across curriculum. Let, let us look at the factors which tell about the need and significance of a better language learning methodology. Studies in India have shown that most of the educated people in India are struggling in the case of foreign language, that is English language. Though they have, a, they have got a fantastic subject competency. The present globalized world offers thousands of courses all over the world. But our students are not able to get admitted in foreign universities only because of the, they keep deficiency in using foreign language. The real causes behind such a pathetic condition are nothing else but the teachers and the educational system. Schools often keep a timetable in which only one or two hours are allotted for language learning and other subjects are taught in their mother tongue or in faulty foreign language. A huge majority of the teachers at present are struggling when using the foreign language. They are practicing adjustment teaching in classrooms as they are not able to elaborate points in foreign language. Students often tend to follow the wrong models of the teachers in using foreign language or for communication. Most of the teachers are not able to make use of modern technology because they lack commanding power in foreign language. They are not able to manage group activities effectively. As they lack communication skill in foreign language, most of the teachers are providing market notes to students because of this deficiency. Okay, we can go to next point, practice of language across curriculum. For the successful implementation of language across curriculum, there should be a comprehensive approach and multifaceted planning in, in an inst institution. There should be a teamwork. Both the language teachers and other subject teachers have a vital role in the effective practicing of such dynamic program in school. The language teachers teach general vocabulary while the subject teachers teach the vocabulary or terms related to the con concerned subject. The language teachers teach the structural elements in the foreign language while the subject teachers make them use of such structures when speaking or writing some content in the subject classrooms. The language teacher teaches, teaches different suffixes and prefixes and the subject teacher would make them use such items with some subject related topics. For example, a social teacher makes the students use the suffix ism uh, in the terms like socialism, communism, capitalism, etc. Moreover, there should be a mutual understanding and respect with both the language teacher and subject teacher. They should contact each other that language teacher should give guidelines to the subject teacher and the subject teacher should clarify the doubts by consulting the language teacher. Uh, then next we can see advantages of advantages or benefits of language across curriculum. Last language across curriculum offers a more realistic and functional learning foreign uh, language. It helps students become effective user of the language in a day to day communication as well as in academic and professional aspects of communication. Being an effective user of foreign language is an advantage in field, any field of life. It helps the students to write their own assignments and projects. They can indulge in self-study by having an enormous reading and browsing online if got ability to ha handle foreign language properly. It helps them to make use of information technology for useful development. It assists research scholars writing a thesis in original language. It helps teachers to handle classes with beautiful and meaningful sentences. Teachers can update their knowledge and develop their skills. It also helps them make use of technologies in teaching so that make the classes more interesting. Globalization has caused for tremendous changes in all the fields of life. It enhanced the importance of foreign language acquisition. Globalization has created so many job opportunities for today's youth. A youngster from India 
can gain a job in Europe or America or any other country in the world if he has got commanding power in English language. The new trends like all center, call centers and tourism have opened vast world opportunity for those who are fluent in English language. It also opens a vast world of educational opportunities for students though, who can admit or can be admitted in foreign universities if able to communicate in English language efficiently and effectively. In short, language across curriculum facilitates a more flexible and authentic foreign language acquisition. Now you can watch a video about how English become a global language. Listen to the lecture and take notes. Today's topic is English as a global language. I know many of you speak English as a second language, right? How about you, Hiroshi? Is English your first language? No, my first language is Japanese. English is my second language. And how about you, Patricia? English is my second language, too. My first language is Spanish. See, many of you use English as a second language, even as a global language, to communicate with other people who speak English as a second language. Today, I want to give you two contrasting points of view on whether or not English is a global language. First is that English is obviously a global language. People who support this point of view believe English is the language people all over the world use to communicate and that it is gradually replacing other languages. The second point of view is that English is not truly a global language because it is not the main language spoken by most people worldwide. Supporters of this view say that even though many people speak some English worldwide, English has not replaced other languages. They acknowledge that people use English every day for many reasons, but this doesn't mean English is replacing other languages, nor does it make English the main language spoken in the world. First, let's examine the first view. First of all, English is the dominant language of business, travel, and science. When people need a common language, they often use English. Think about it. English is often used at tourist information centers, in international hotels, at airports. If you use a taxi in Rome and you can't speak Italian, the taxi driver is more likely to use English than any other languages. It is used at business meetings and international sports events. The European Union uses English along with French at its meetings. ASEAN, the Asian trade group, uses English at its meetings. Can you think of other situations in which English is used as a common language? How about this class? All of us are listening to you in English. Absolutely. Educational settings are a great example. Any others? How about a chat room on the Internet? I sometimes go to chat rooms and everyone is using English. Excellent example. The Internet has created a lot of international communities and people often use English. In fact, most people who use the Internet know English. This helps support the view that English is a global language. The second major reason that people believe English is a global language is that it is the official language of more than 75 countries. This means these countries use English in schools, banks, business, and government. Of these 75 countries, English may be the only official language of the country, like in England, or English may be used along with other official languages, like in the Philippines, Singapore, and India. In countries like India, where so many languages are spoken, you can see how using English as an official language makes it easier for people to communicate. The third reason to support the global argument is that every year about one billion people study English. Why? What are some of the reasons? Hiroshi, how about you? Well, now to study, and someday I want to be in international business. That's a solid reason. How about you, Oksana? I'm not really sure. I just think it will help me in the future somehow. Okay. There's a more general reason. The point is, people want and need to learn English because it offers them opportunities. To sum up, English is used every day by many people. 
people all over the world come in contact with each other for many reasons. They need a common language, a language to facilitate communication. Being proficient in English gives someone an advantage in these situations. Okay, I have given you many examples of how English is used in a variety of situations. Nevertheless, does this mean that English is a global language? Let's look at why some people don't believe English has replaced other languages. First, there are about three times as many people who speak Chinese as their first language as those who speak English as a first language. And in many countries, where some people use English for work each day, they don't use English anywhere else. Even in English-speaking countries, there are millions of people who prefer to speak a language other than English at home, with friends, or at work. Second, I mentioned before that 75 countries have English as their official language. This doesn't mean all or even most of the people in these countries can speak English. For example, in India, most sources agree that only about 5% of the population speaks English. That's a small percentage. Third, how much English does a person need to know to be called an English speaker? People may learn some English for a specific situation, such as the taxi driver I mentioned earlier. However, I think you would all agree with me that a taxi driver who knows a few phrases like where are you going or what is the name of your hotel isn't really a proficient English speaker. Another example is airspeak, the English that is used by air traffic controllers and pilots. A pilot for Japan Airlines or an air traffic controller in Paris needs to know airspeak, but they may learn only the English words they need for these jobs and therefore they can't be considered English speakers. The point here is that people all over the world may use some English for work or other situations. Nevertheless, this doesn't mean they are fluent in English. They still use their first language for daily communication. English is not their main language. So, what does this all mean? I think it's safe to say that English will continue to be the main language used in many international settings because, as I said earlier, people all over the world need a common language. And for now, English is that language. But English won't replace other languages for most daily communication, and this to me is what a global language really is, one that replaces others for most everyday communication. Some people are afraid of this. They worry that as people use English more and more, their ability in their first language will decline. I think people will use English along with other languages. We are moving into a global culture. And as this continues, I think people from non-English speaking countries will want to maintain their culture, including their first language. They may still want to learn English, but I don't see them giving up their own language for English. What do you think? I'm going to stop there. I know that's a lot of information to digest. We'll continue talking about some of the differences in the English words used in various countries like Australia, Singapore, and the Philippines. That's all for today. Come see me if you have any questions. When we conclude this episode, we can understand that this modern concept suggests that a foreign or second language should be taught out of the class, traditional language classrooms by using contextual and content-based language teaching methodologies throughout the school hours, which can offer an opportunity for the students for acquiring a faultless and effective foreign language through continuous and systematic practicing hours at school.